So before we move on to uh, introduction of the state operator, let, let me give you an example of an explicitly entangled state in our um, system of two spin one half particles. So remember, we're working in uh, a Hilbert space that's the tensor product of the Hilbert space in two dimensions and another Hilbert space in two dimensions. So in total, we'll have four dimensions and we indicate our basis vectors as plus plus, plus minus, minus plus and minus minus. Um, in this case, I'm writing an entangled state that is given by um, the expression one over square root of two for normalization and then plus minus minus the minus plus state. And if we look back just a little bit, um, we, we wrote down earlier a set of requirements that um, uh, the coefficients in this expression has to satisfy for this to be able to be written as a tensor product of individual states. And the, the requirements were that uh, the product of the coefficients beta and gamma of the plus minus and the minus plus states had to be equal to alpha times delta of the plus plus and the minus minus states. Now here, alpha and delta are equal to zero. Beta is equal to minus gamma is one over square root of two. So alpha times delta is definitely not equal to beta times gamma. So this cannot be um, a tensor product of two independent states. So this must be um, an entangled state, one that describes um, interacting states or inter interactions between those two, um, those two particles in that, uh, in that spin one half um, Hilbert space. There's another interesting characteristic that this particular entangled state has, and that is that it is invariant under um, rotations. So remember, if we're writing a rotation in our SU2 um, space, so this is a unitary transformation with um, S, so it has a determinant of uh, equal to, um, to one. So that describes our rotations um, corresponding with a rotation over an angle phi, um, which appears at the exponent here, around an axis that is rotated by an angle theta away from the z-axis. So we've derived that earlier. Um, there's, of course, some freedom in how you pick the direction of this, ang this axis around which you rotate, but we're keeping this, I think, in the, in the z-x um, plane. So that, uh, that is something we can, of course, um, uh, rotate away as, uh, as another uh, transformation. So this is the most general description then of an SU2 rotation. Um, and this is a unitary rotation. You can satisfy your, uh, your, your curiosity by calculating um, the necessary requirements on unitary transformations. Um, but one particular one that we will use is that um, A times D minus B times C has to be equal to one. That is of course what comes from the determinant. The determinant has to be equal to one to be in this uh, special unitary group with two dimensions. There's other constraints again that I'm not writing down here. So that means if we rotate our, um, our, our vectors in our, our two dimensional Hilbert spaces that we're taking the tensor product of, um, then we'll find A times the plus state plus B times the minus state. And for the minus sign, we'll, uh, for the minus state, we'll find C times the plus state plus D times the minus state after rotation. Now let's look at what happens when um, we construct these new basis vectors plus minus and minus plus in the tensor product of our, of our spaces. So the rotation on the plus minus state, that will give us um, the combination that has, again, for the plus plus, we get AC. For the plus minus state, we'll get A and D. For the minus plus state, we'll get B and C. And then for the minus minus state, B and D. We can also do this on the minus plus state. Um, we'll find the same coefficients for the plus plus and the minus minus uh, basis vectors, um, but we'll find the opposite coefficients for the minus plus and the plus minus states. Okay, so again, let's step back. What are we doing here? This is how this plus minus state, which again now is in a four dimensional um, space, how that state rotates or is modified under ro rotation um, around an, uh, over an angle phi under a, uh, around an axis um, that is angle at an angle of theta. So we're in a four dimensional space. So it makes sense that this, uh, this one basis vector picks up coefficients in all four of the basis vectors of that state of that space. Now, once we've applied this rotation, let's now look at how this particular state that we're looking at this one over square root of two plus minus 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 plus how that rotates. So we apply a rotation 
unitary operator to those basis factors. And what we find is we get AD minus BC times our original expression. Now, let's look back at what we said earlier here. This rotation matrix, this transformation matrix is unitary. Um, and it has determinant equal to 1, so AD minus BC has to be equal to 1, and that's indeed the coefficient that we found here um, in front of our, uh, our, our, our state, or expression. So it turns out that our expression for this particular entangled state that we've chosen is unchanged if we apply um, unitary basis transformations in this uh, in, this two in the two-dimensional spaces, or if we apply um, a, a, a coordinate transformation for each of the two um, states that uh, that is uh, um, taking part uh, through the tensor product in the four-dimensional space. So that makes this particular entangled state um, a little bit more interesting than just any entangled state, and that's a state that we'll see come back um, in the future.